All right, we're back for our all-new show, Damage Blue. It's hot outside, but look, before we get into all the tea served cappuccino style, let me tell y'all about this beard. See, now this looks like I have a perfectly manicured beard, but this is some straight-up bullshit by my barber. Now, I should put his Instagram up here, but let me tell you what he did. I had a little bit of gray right here today, and I said, dye this gray. He said, dye it. I said, dye any gray. Dye it all. So he literally dyed my whole face, and now I have... <laughs> <laughs> a Beijing beard. This is crazy. You know, I don't want people out there yeah. watching the show to think that I'm one of these guys that paint beards and shit on. I don't do that. And I'm not a fan of that. In fact, I won't even lay with y'all because y'all be leaving your whole face on my pillow. But this is, I made him come over and scrub most of it off. It was darker than this. Are you serious? Now, now it's not Beijing. It's fibers. It like so now they can actually spray fibers on your face. So it's not damage. No, like no, 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 damage. This is the same type of process I did when I did Indian clay painting in school. This motherfucker had a bowl <laughs> with some shit and painted oh. it all across my face. So yeah, that's Beijing. <laughs> I don't want people to think that I'm having issues with aging. I just was like, let me just go in and dye this little white patch. And then all of a sudden now, here I am looking like a whole twink at the club with some fake beard, but it's kind of cute, but it's just, I feel, yeah, it looks crazy. Anyway, I'm happy you said you something. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why you look so different. So it was the hair on your face. That makes total sense. You're looking very champagne poppy though. So I'm not sure if that's the look you're going for. Maybe a little heart to finish off the look. I'm not Definitely calling you poppy. No. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Although, although... All right, well, listen, let's just get right into it. There's so much going on. I'm so sick and tired of talking about the Kardashians. I feel like now with my new role in Ye's life, uh, everything I see and hear is Kardashian and not from him. It's the internet. And the internet is talking now about Khloe Kardashian because she's finally admitting to Photoshopping her daughter in photos uh, or into photos, which is kind of crazy. Now, we all know that the Kardashians have done a lot of work to look perfect, and a lot of them do look perfect as whatever perfect would be if you go and get work done. But uh, now people are uh, attacking Chloe for Photoshopping and editing her daughter into pictures. Now, Chloe recently shared a photo of her and Tristan Thompson's daughter, True, next to Kim and Kanye's daughter, Chicago, and said that they had fun at Disneyland. However, fans quickly realized that something was off with the picture. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. So now... We're photoshopping kids into memories that they actually don't have. This is this is a new level of craziness. And so so fans figured out something was wrong with the picture. And one Twitter user put Chloe's recent photo next to one shared earlier in the year of the girls. Now let me show you the photo really quick. This is the photo. Okay. <laughs> I just don't understand wow. why they would put her in a photo that she's not in. Anyway, the fans uh, said that they had questions and they tagged Kim and Chloe. Is this just a no new level of weird on this or what? I it feel bad for the babies. Weird. I feel bad yes. for the babies. Could you, could you picture growing up, Jason, you thought you had a nice picture with your cousin and come to find out that moment never happened? Like, they, you can't create these moments just because you want to, like, Somebody's going to look back at these photos when they get older and be like, we didn't go there together? It's like, no, you actually never been to Disneyland together. And I'm like, that's different. Like, I just feel bad for the baby. Well, it's funny you mentioned creating moments because Chloe had a recent interview where they asked her why she stayed with Tristan and why she was his, I don't know, mule for so long. And her response actually was, even when they were going through the outs and he had cheated in X, Y, and Z, she would still invite him to family events because she wanted her daughter to be, be able to look back at the videos and the pictures. So her obsession with creating fake moments for her daughter has been going on since the, the, the delivery. So this is actually more more of what she does. She wants Tristan to be around, not because she loves him or because he loves her, but she wants True to have pictures and videos of her dad at her birthday party. So Chloe's kind of been living a lie for a while as far as creating these fake memories. Because I think in her family, having these books and these videos has been such a huge like commodity for them. She wants her daughter to have the same thing, but she forgot to make it real. Find a real well, father well, figure in a real happens. Disneyland. Listen, you lose reality when you're on a reality show that's not real. You know, and when you live your life plumping and dumping to look a certain way and forget what you really look like, because, you know, Kylie Jenner is a beautiful girl today. Kylie Jenner of the earlier Jenner days 
not so much. But, you know, the ugly duckling turned into a swan. But, you know, my issue here is clearly that, you know, one thing I would have loved is that Chloe um, photoshopped Tristan in her life as a real partner because that is a photo we've Ooh. never seen. Uh, I think that the, they've lost touch with reality to the extent that this little girl now is going to grow up with memories of being photoshopped at Disneyland. Like the kid, the place where every kid wants to be a kid, you actually put your kid there when your kid wasn't there. Well, Chloe responded to the fans tweet, and this is what Chloe had to say. She said, well, I fucked this one up. Anyways, let's focus on something else. Our show airs in a few days. I mean... At least you got to give her props for taking responsibility. I mean, she could have lied her all her whole way, you know, to Daffy Duck's den. I don't know. It's it's just this is weird to me. I think this is weird. Now, it's wait, weird. is she the one actually photoshopping? Because if she is, I'm gonna give her some cool points. That was some good work right there. Now, if, that, if no, she's the one that? actually going on Photoshop <laughs> on the computer, <laughs> cutting her daughter out and just splicing, it's like a collage. You know how like. Uh -uh. You know, people used to like journal. Like it's like a, a a hobby. It's like it's like knitting. You're just photoshopping. Collages are the truth, though. You can't collage a fake reality and then put it on social media. It's not collaging <laughs> if you're lying. Well, collaging well, means real. Like Pinterest. My question as a parent: To what extent do we manufacture our child's life experience? You know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. you, you teach your kids not to manufacture their credit report. You teach your kids not to make fake bank statements. And, and employment records to get that good job they want. You teach your kids not to be a scammer, but then you scam them by putting them, this is almost as bad as somebody using their kid's social security number. It's just fraud all the way around. I don't understand what would actually make sense to do this. Um, and I, I just think it's the desperation for attention for me because I almost feel like they're smart enough, like Chloe and them, these are brilliant people when it comes to social media. They know the fans are gonna catch it. They know it's going to be a conversation, and then they know it's an opportunity to promote the show that they want everybody to watch. Mm. So you think it was a bad Photoshop on purpose? Interesting. Yeah. It's like I an Easter like egg. Use, I just don't like the way they use Mickey Mouse. All right. Well, um, the other night I ran to Brittany Renner, but I think she was too drunk to remember. Anyways, Brittany Renner, she's in the news. Uh, she's clapping back at uh, jokes that Cam Newton prefers Aisha Curry over her. So Brittany wasn't here for some uh, Twitter users' comments after they tried to clown her over a recent Cam Newton comment. Now, Cam recently did an interview, and he said that he preferred to be with a woman who knows how to handle her man and that, quote, bad bitches don't know how to cook their man a hot meal. I can't even uh, <laughs> listen. This is what he said. And uh, I knew what a woman was, not a bad bitch. Okay, what's the difference? A woman. Okay. A bad bitch is... A person who's just, you know, girl, I'm a bad bitch. You know, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I I, I, I looked apart, but I don't act apart. Okay. You know, and it's a lot of women who are bad bitches. And I say bitches in, in, in a way not to degrade a woman, but just to, to, to go off the aesthetic of what they deem is a boss chick. Mm -hmm. Now, a woman for me is... Handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's needs, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of, like, I'm a boss bitch, like, I'm a this, I'm a dad. No, baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You don't know, you don't know when to be quiet. Oh, Lord. Okay, shout out to Wallow and Gilly. That was on the Million Dollars Worth of <laughs> Game podcast. Well, you know, I guess... You know, Brittany received that comment and felt some type of way after CFO sports host Jay Tuck uploaded the tweet joking about the comment. This is what he said that uh, caught her attention. He said, Cam Newton basically said he prefers an Aisha Curry or Savannah James over a Brittany Renner, and all y'all heard was cooking. Now, Jay Tuck's comment comes after a sit down Cam had with Brittany in February. He told her, where he told her, that he never slided her DMs, and this is what he told Brittany to her face. And let's let's keep it let's keep it funky now. Let's keep it funky. Like I'm 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 Cam Newton, right? Okay. And I ain't gonna lie. I'm not about to hit no DM with no Britney talking about, hey yo, what's good, what's popping? Where you at? You in Atlanta, I see you in Atlanta, boom, slide through. But why not? Because I don't want to end up in your book. Well, I mean, Brittany has been here on the show where we talked about her book. In that book, she um, talked about all her relationships, including Trey Songs and a bunch of other people. So who's right or wrong in this whole scenario? Because I'm kind of in the middle. 
Well, I don't, and the problem is, which one do we address? Now, one, he just put that tweet together, right? He never, Cam Newton never said he preferred somebody over another woman, right? He's never said that out of his mouth. He said his own set of things that we can talk about. But in that clip where he was talking to Brittany Renner, Cam clearly hasn't read Brittany's book. I actually read the book because we interviewed her. And Brittany didn't really talk about her relationships as much as she talked about what she learned from him. And I'm not trying to cape from her. I read the book. She honestly talked about what she learned from each relationship, and she never named one single person. She, she did. Now, she and did promoting the book. She be when promoting the book, but she in the book she was telling stories that led you to think she was talking about certain people, you know. But she ain't never say their name. That's her experience. She can talk about it. So that's what I will address that clip individually. Cam never read the book, so him saying, "Oh, I'm going to end up in your book." I'm sure Brittany Renner talked to other men that was not included in her book. So I'll just speak to that clip. But there's so much to unpack here. Uh, y'all yeah, tell me I mean, where y'all want to start Listen, first. let's be clear. There are some men that want a wife. And let's be clear. Some wives do happen to be bad bitches, okay? Um, but I think what he was trying to say was that, you know, if you want that stripper chick who's a bad bitch, but she's not wifey material, then be with that stripper bitch, not that stripper bitch that you want to cheat with on your wife because a lot of men aren't with the women that they really want to be with they got the wife at home to have the perfect home to have the cooked meal to have the kids cared for to have somebody to go home to and lay up with but they want that girl that is in the strip club and that's in the streets and that is a little more edgy and i've seen it time and time again with celebrities that we write about on hollywood unlocked now i remember floyd being on the show years ago where he talked about you know, all the different type of women that he's with and that he's dating the type of women that he likes. Some of them happen to be strippers. It's the hypocrisy for me because Cam Newton is a, is a athlete, which means he's surrounded by men who are hoes and who run their mouths and who have friends who go on podcasts instead of going to therapy. And so the very same type of bad bitches, some bad bitches are men. So I just think it's real funny to me that in this day and age where dudes are acting the same way, we're going to act like this is a gender thing, okay? Another thing is he's dressed like the kind of woman that he wants to be, so maybe he should date himself. Um, I think the part that got to me was not the cooking part. It was the, and knows when to shut up. We're in a space right now where men are yapping as much as women are. Y'all don't know how to shut up either, right? That's why you all have podcasts and, and think you could do what we're doing on the show. So I think instead of making this a gender thing where you want everybody to be like your mother, your mother raised you 30 years ago. The world has changed since then. Women who are now bad bitches and wives at the same time. So I think it's really, really archaic to act like these two archetypes can't exist in the same person. There are women who are bad bitches who know when to shut up, but also know when to speak up. And there are men who also don't like to be held accountable. And I think what he's doing is he's conflating his disdain for one archetype, for archaic ways that women should be. And I want to hear from him, what should men be doing? Because if we're going to be really old school, old school says that we should shut up and cook it also says that you should have really big penises and be rich and build a house with your bare hands if you can't do that if i'm showing you grace i think you should show us grace too so i think it's the hypocrisy for me that he's asking for things but he can't get the inverse as a man so cam stay in your lane like talk to us like we're actually but, but, we're well, telling one of your boys devil, devil's advocate oh. cam newton can be he, he cam newton can he be can wait 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 cam newton because we're talking about one man who had his opinion that man can be all the things that a man needs to be to a woman. I don't know his dating history to know if I can validate that last statement. What I will say is that we do know, and you can look at him, and I don't need to draw out the men because I'm trying to spill less tea and more cappuccino. There are a lot of men who have cheated on their wives with a woman that does not measure up to what that wife represents for their business, for their household, for their branding. Most of these women to these athletes are treated like, uh, you know, like, stand feeling i don't know what it is like a co-star but it's not real like you know and so i think to his point there's some you know i understand why he said he wouldn't slide in britney's dms because britney even said when she did her book that she knew some men would feel some type of way because she was you know talking about private relationships on the other hand you know i just wish that the comment about a woman knowing when to shut up I mean, I listen, shout out to all the strong ass women out there that don't believe they need to shut up. In fact, I think more women need to speak up because some of y'all stay in these shithole relationships your whole life. And then you raise shithole kids because they written this just shithole relationship. And then they end up on Hollywood Unlocked when they're dating a shithole teenager. So I wish that more women would continue to 
stand up and speak out if they're in bad relationships with their, or if they're with men who feel like they should be nothing but an ornament because you know women are much more than that i don't know uh but but i but i also say to women women have a responsibility to women have a responsibility to carry themselves the way they want to be treated now some people will say oh that's fucked up so that's not right a woman should be able to act any way she want and be treated accordingly well i don't know that to be true um, and, and, you know, some can go on and argue that I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that feel some type of way about that statement, but I'll be very clear with you. You know, uh, if I was dating a man and I'm gonna use a man because to blues point, this don't just end with women. It's men too. Like it's not a woman and man thing. It's people, but we're speaking exactly. specifically to this conversation. But, you know, if I was with a man that didn't carry himself the way that I felt best represented me in the household that I was building that man and i'm not saying a woman because there are some men who are less uh they, they they ain't even bad bitches they just a mess you know what i mean so so i so i want to make that as a blanket statement i feel like the individual that gets with somebody deserves to have a partner that reflects what their household looks like and there are a lot of women that i know personal women that are bad bitches that want a husband but but they ain't they ain't wife material and so how do you get that husband if you ain't wife material it's like saying you want a versace sweater but you shopping at sloss and swap meet like you can get a you can get a, a a versace sweater at the sauce and swap meet but it ain't gonna be real versace you know what i mean jason i, I will say this I, and this i, I want to clarify this i'm not talking about cam newton i'm talking about the dudes who are co-signing who can't keep up right so if you're asking for something that you can't give you're a hypocrite i need you to sit this one out you're, you don't have Cam Newton money, his resources. Sit this one out, bro. He wasn't talking about you. What bothers me is, and I have to be clear about this, I'm a traditional woman. So I'm not even like the, even though I talk modern, I'm a traditional woman. I was raised in a, in a Latin American West Indian household. I believe in taking care of my man. I believe in all the stuff that is old school. What I don't believe, though, is hypocrisy where a man wants me to be an old school wife, but he doesn't want to be an old school husband. And so what really, really bothers me is all these men have a checklist of what we need to do, and they want us to be angels and very virgins, but fuck them like hoes. How do you think I'm going to get the experience to fuck you like a hoe, sir? I need you to do the math. They want us to be these perfect virgins, but when it comes time to talk about what they're going to do, I want to hear men talk about what, what they need to be real men. I want Cam Newton to tell me or anybody that he's talking to, what does a real man have to do in order for her to show up? Because I know some bad bitches who act one way with dudes who are not about nothing and who act like wives with different kind of dudes. You can get two kinds of actions from the same woman, depending on how you show up. And a lot of men don't realize it's them. I'm just saying. All right. So, damage. Why do you behave this way? <laughs> I think it's all reactionary. I think if you want a certain type of woman, you could be with that type of woman. But I think when you're on these platforms, you're forced to speak on what you see on social media. Me personally, mm -hmm. I never want to talk to somebody who identifies as a bad bitch. That's not my type of girl. But I won't get on this platform and talk about oh, bad bitches of this and bad bitches of that. That's just not what I would do. But it's well, a reaction. I feel like Cam Newton said what he said, and he should be able to say whatever he want to say. But there's a reaction to that. There's going to be people on social media that may not agree, and that's fine. Cam Newton, if that's what you want, go for that. If that's what you feel like your truth is, speak that. But there's going to be a reaction to it, and it is what it is. But that, for me, it's not my type of woman. I also, on the flip side, because I, I, you know, I date women, I see the opposite. I see women wanting traditional old school men and they don't quote unquote meet up to the old school factor. So I think to agree with everybody, it is just people in general. Everybody's not meeting up to this old school archaic way of thinking. We need to all move forward. All of us want to go back into the past for specific things we want in our personal needs today. It don't work like that. We are in the future. We need to deal with what's happening today. I can't pick and choose as a man as a, oh, I want you to dance like a stripper, but I want you to cook like my grandmom from the 1940s. It don't work like that. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's, well, it, is, it is what well, it is. <laughs> well, let me say, I don't know who Damage is dating now and who he wants to see this episode, but that was great. I, that was great, Damage. And I'm gonna, you think he's lying? I'm gonna, no, Damage is a good I guy. I don't think yeah. nobody oh, would yeah. consider themselves a bad bitch. Ain't nothing wrong Damn, with bad yeah. bitches, but that's not my type. I got a bad bitch flying in tomorrow. And you know Ooh. what? Let's be very clear. <laughs> that nigga don't have to cook worth a shit. I got Postmates, Google <laughs> Eats, Grubhub, and every other Dine and Dash, whatever app is on this phone to get the meal <laughs> that he desires. I want a bad bitch, but you know, I, I want that bad bitch to have be like husband material too. I feel like he's gonna want a baddie. 
Wait, wait, I feel like you can have them both. You know what I mean? He asked me, he said, um, are we going to the gym? You can go to the gym downstairs because that's your job. I got to go to the studio and record a show. That's my job. So, yes, I'm going to date a bad bitch and I'm going to turn it into a house husband. That's just the way it is. It's the American you, you know what it reminds me of? Like, mm. It's like when certain ladies be like, "Oh, I want to, I want like a corporate guy with this job, but he has to have some street appeal." It's like I know we all want little bits and pieces of certain things, yeah. but in reality, it just don't happen like that. All right, if you like a certain uh-uh, type uh-uh, of woman, be uh-uh, with that type uh-uh, of woman. Uh-uh, uh-uh. New York Wall Street, New York Wall Street, them thugs is up there. They there. <laughs> they there. They there. Can I? Okay, I well, listen, about well, that. listen, listen. Well, Brittany Renner caught wind of OJ Tuck's tweet, and this is what she said. She said, some women choose to suck dick and shut up, some don't. Marriage is a business to many. So yeah, people play the part. Let's stop glorifying relationships and the individuals in them we know nothing about. Most cheat with women who look nothing like their wife anyway. I mean, she then uploaded a video further slamming everybody who, quote, can't live in their truth. And this is what she said. Mm-hmm my business <laughs> i was but then i you know i was trying to see why cam was trending but anyways i see someone throw my name in a tweet like this because people love to do that the whatever woman you think is i don't know the standard versus the big bad whore who can't keep her mouth shut a lot of these couples you guys don't even really like each other for real <laughs> not even attracted to your wife very sad that a lot of people cannot live in their truth a lot of people can't do that because marriage is a business to a lot of people. It's their preference. People want to get married for whatever reasons. Let people be happy with their preferences. God bless. One more thing because I just can't shut up. I don't know when to be quiet. <laughs> a lot of these preferences are rooted in self-hate. I didn't want to say it. I said it. Yeah. I live for Britney. I love for Britney. Listen, um, and you know, I, I never really understood why people shamed Britney, but then I get it. She talks like y'all niggas do. Mm-hmm. And y'all can't handle it because she gives you what y'all give them. And I always, that's why I love an Amber Rose. And I love these girls who can give back what the men give them. You know, um, I really feel like at some point the whole uh, playing field will be balanced. But I do agree, and I don't. I want to be very clear. My earlier comments, not just attributed to women. I feel like anybody who wants to be a wife or a husband needs to be able to play that part. But I also believe you can be a bad bitch. I don't think you need to separate the two the way that Cam was saying it. But I also believe the girls that be at the club trying to jump from table to table to table, sipping on all these bottles for free as a bad bitch. You not sipping from table to table looking for no husband. You looking for that free bottle of liquor. And 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 we see you when you come to the table. And guess what? They don't look at you or talk about you privately as a wife. They talk about you as that bad bitch. They either want to stay or leave the table. So let's just be clear. Like I feel like women and men need to be treated. They need to handle themselves the way they want to be treated. But that doesn't mean that one man standard, Cam Newton, is the standard of how they should carry themselves. I hope that makes sense. It's, this is a lot to unpack. And I there's multiple layers. You know, layers, what? You know, know what, what I mean? You know what I'm going to say real quick, Blue? I think if I ask Jason what a bad bitch is, and if I ask you what a bad bitch was, and if I ask myself what a bad bitch was, we'll have three different definitions. And I think when Cam... No, I, 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 I think so. I think so. And I think when Cam thinks of bad bitch, he automatically thinks of something negative where if i say blue oh you say all my friends a bad bitch she got this going on you're gonna think of something else and i feel like it's a projection of what you don't like about this that i think think the connotation of bad bitch that he's using is aesthetic he's talking about what the like what a what a rosa acosta looks like versus what an aisha curry looks like but aisha curry is gorgeous and beautiful too and rosa costa is beautiful and gorgeous rosa's not a hoe she's a businesswoman so he's talking specifically aesthetic is it, that, is that's it what a i look do. or an attitude go ahead yeah, I, yeah. I just, okay so i'm gonna say this no it's not gonna change because he's talking about baddies and baddies is a very finite aesthetic and as and, and thank you for bringing up rosa she's my friend rosa how rosa looks and, and how rosa acts are two very different things from what you would assume so the baddie aesthetic damage is what he's talking about so we all are talking about the same aesthetic and you guys know i have a lot of baddie aesthetic friends 
the way they act would not be what you would assume from the way that they look. A lot of them want to cook and clean and are super domestic and really sweet and business minded and X, Y, and Z. He's made, making an assumption that all girls who look alike act alike. And how many times have I come on this show and said, hey guys, when people see me, they see a plus size girl and they expect me to be one way. And then when I start talking, they realize I'm somewhere else. I know what it's like to have somebody look at you and assume you're one thing and then you're actually something else. That's why so many people, women are having a bad reaction is a lot of women who are traditional a lot of women who want to hold their man down are now saying, hey, I want to hold him down, but I actually want to look cute too. I actually want to look a little bit like a baddie, even though I'm traditional. And so the reason that Cam's statements are so archaic is he doesn't realize those lines are blurring. The good girls are actually starting to look more like baddies, but they're still good girls. And the girls who are sexually free and running around, if they're doing it ethically, there's nothing wrong with that. But if they're messy, being messy is nasty in all genders. And him acting like only baddies act this way is where he lost us. Especially Especially when he said we need to stop talking because who's going to educate y'all make it make sense mm. well listen um rest in peace cam newton's comments okay all right well this is a this is a story that has been uh you know circulating online for a while now and it first came to hollywood unlocked uh prince from love and hip-hop miami sent it to me and it's about this 25 year old only fans model courtney taylor clinney who's been trending after she allegedly stabbed her black boyfriend of two years to death while he slept. And I, the reason why I want to talk about this is one, I haven't publicly. And two, it is a story that needs to continue to stay in the headlines until she is arrested and at least cleared of these allegations, which I don't think she'll be cleared. I mean, I'm going to say alleged because I don't want to be sued again, but we actually saw pictures of her on TMZ covered in blood. Uh, and it, the, the belief that it's the, this man's blood. Now this woman, uh, who allegedly stabbed her boyfriend is not in jail. She's still on the streets. And you know, the frustrating part about this is we talk about hashtag Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is not only about when the police kill a black man. It is about when black people are unfairly killed by white people. Okay, now there's not enough information circulating, but let me get into the story and then we can unpack it. Now, let me show you a photo of the co couple. This is them together, I guess, during happier times. Now, Christian Toby, you know, was a week away from celebrating his 28th birthday when he allegedly was killed by his girlfriend inside of her Miami apartment. This happened on April 3rd. Now, when cops arrived, Courtney was drenched in blood and claimed that she acted in self-defense during a domestic violence incident. Now, while Christian's family and friends say he was never a violent person, neighbors say the couple had a long history of domestic violence, with Courtney calling police at least seven times in the last month. Now, her attorney said that uh, the couple were in, quote, a toxic relationship and that Christian was kicked out a week before the fatal stabbing. Now, Courtney has yet to be charged with anything. And on top of claiming self-defense, she since claimed, quote, mental illness. But that didn't stop her from grabbing a drink. Take a look. I'll videotape her. Right now, she, yeah, you should go. Yeah, you should go. Because you just killed your boyfriend. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so people are really upset by the fact that this girl has just killed her boyfriend. And although she's claiming domestic violence, she killed him in his sleep is what they're reporting. And then now she's out just having a casual drink with her, her dad at a bar. And prior to all of this, she was on the um, this podcast in Miami where she talked about, you know, uh, the type of woman she is and the type of man she dates. And there were like literally some interesting things that she had to say that made me side eye her. So now I'm I'm calling the Miami Police Department, the whole city of Miami out for this because this just seems ridiculous. Uh, have you guys seen this story? Yeah. And to me, it seems a little premeditated, if you ask me. You know, when they talk about, oh, the neighbors were saying, who, who got this report from the neighbors? Who talked to the neighbors, right? Oh, she was calling the police. Why? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's certain things, seeing the aftermath of after you killed your boyfriend, because if you did it in self-defense, regardless, you're going to have some type of remorse. You should be in some type of shock. You're not going to be out at the mall with your friend getting a drink. So it's how I look at the aftermath. What makes me hear all the stories of what happened leading up to the murder. It's like, oh, this is just, it's all BS. Oh, the neighbors heard it for weeks. So they never called the police? Okay, it's all good. Like, it's this, this story is sick.
the fact that they haven't even detained her speaks volumes. If, if I, as a black woman, was dating a, a white man and I stabbed him and I claimed self-defense and the neighbor said I had called 60 times in the past month, my ass would still be behind bars some, right now waiting for bail money. So the fact that they didn't even detain her or see her as a suspect until there was public outcry already speaks to a double standard regardless of what's happening. Also, too, when I watched that podcast that she was on, she made it a point to laugh and say that she only dates rich black men. And so there was so much fetishizing that was happening in that video. It was already a point of concern. And then we're going to, I guess we're going to talk about the tweets from him. So it sounded to me like both of them were fetishizing each other. And that's why I felt some kind of concern about her getting any kind of justice. Because it seems like she thought she got away with it until social media stuck their teeth into her butt. And that concerns me. Well, well, now, of course, there's a lot more information coming out of the tweets you talk about. After this bar incident, some old tweets from Christian began surfacing. They'll show People are saying that he was targeting black women. Now, let me show you these tweets. Okay. Now, tweet number one is, O-O-M-F, black girls are born knowing how to shake their ass. Me, honestly, I don't care. They're not my type. Can't believe O-O-M-F thinks I talk to black girls when I, when I don't. Uh, the way black girls disgrace themselves on TV. Once again, I'm tired of these black girls in my government class full of ignorant black women. Now, listen, I don't, you know, his tweets clearly are stupid, but, you know, uh, I don't know that that paints the full picture of why this white woman killed this black man. It shows that he loved a white woman and he loved white women and he fetishized, as you said, over white women and a white woman ended up killing him. The details of what happened is not clear, but Christian's brother Jeffrey uh, did post on his social media addressing the tweets, and this is what he had to say. He said, as a family, we strongly disagree with the ignorant and repulsive tweets from my then high school age brother that have recently uh, surfaced. However, the tweets do not diminish our demand for a thorough investigation into Toby's murder or negate the necessity for justice. Jeffrey then went in to call out Courtney for using her white privilege to evade consequences. And this is what he said. It's been a week since my brother was brutally and senselessly killed. Courtney Taylor Clinney's callous actions have not been met with an ounce of remorse. The bottom line is inextricably clear. Courtney is being treated differently because of her privilege as a wealthy white woman. Within 24 hours following Toby's death, the detective on the case prematurely concluded this was not a crime of violence, but the information provided is deficient and the, and the lack of transparency strongly suggests foul play is involved. Courtney acknowledges that Toby did not have a weapon. She has no injuries to support her story of imminent danger. Now, it's it's important to note in Florida, there's a stand your ground law. And I don't know that you could be standing your ground while you're sleeping, because if he was sleeping when she stabbed him, he was clearly not posing a threat. So I would love to see the police report and talk to the family to really get into what actually happened here. I mean, other than what it looks like on the surface that a white woman got away with killing a black man. I hope her family, I mean, I hope his family gets justice. I hope that they use all the social media attention in order to make sure that justice is actually served and that she's held accountable for her actions. I will say this because two truths can be the, uh, true at the same time. Earlier, Damage said something brilliant about how you can talk about what you like without putting down anybody else. And I will say, and I will speak as a, as a representative for the black woman right now, we are tired of caping for people who treat us ill, right? And in the same way, the black community as a whole was part of wanting to, uh, to, to be part of the efforts to bring in light to what was happening in the Ukraine. But then when we found out that the people in the Ukraine didn't like black people, we were like, oh, we hope you guys work through the war, but we're gonna sit this one out. As a black woman, I'm tired of caping for people who won't cape for me. So I hope his family gets justice. I hope the community helps him out, but I personally won't be caping for him because I'm tired. I think we need to take responsibility, not just say the, the tweets were repulsive. We need to stop putting down a group of people that you depend on when things go wrong. You guys only want us to be involved when shit goes wrong, but everything else, oh, we're the bottom of the food chain. You don't want to marry us. We're bad, bad girls. We're baddies. We're X, Y, and Z. We're tired. So for anybody like this, who's writing like this, as a black woman, I want black men and black people as a whole to get justice, but I'm not going to be caping for anybody else who speaks ill of us while they're alive. That's my personal opinion. Well, you know, um, dead or alive, right is right and wrong is wrong when it comes exactly. to white people killing black people unjustly. And I, I mean, I'm tired of seeing, uh, you know, they don't have a white lives matter program. They don't have a protect white women program because they don't need it, you know, and the fact that we continue to create these movements that, 
you know, fall dormant whenever it's not hyped by mainstream media is just crazy to me. Right. And I, 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 I have to say shout out to Prince who actually believed enough in this story to not only send it to me once and twice, but push me, text me, DM me and made sure that we shared it. And when we shared it, a lot of other people shared it. And now it's out there and people know about it. And TMZ has, of course, run the photos. This lady was sitting drenched in his blood, handcuffed, trying to kiss her dog. Like, you just kill somebody. Whether it was self-defense or not, I mean, a person that just kills somebody acts a certain way, I would think. Uh, but stabbed anyway. stabbed them. Stabbed them. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of passion, a lot of rage, a lot of hate to stab somebody to death. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. We we send our condolences to the family. We're here if you want to come talk to us. We'd love to continue to share your brother's story. And uh, and the police department, what are y'all doing? Release a statement, release findings. I don't know if we've seen the police report yet. I would love to look at it. Maybe the show here, somebody can find it, but we'd love to see it. All right, well, look, speaking of, uh, uh, well, I don't even know how to transi transition to this. There's a comedian named Drewski. I'm not familiar with him, but he was being drugged over a video showing how men prey on drunk women. Now, social media uh, comedian Drewski, I guess is his name, is getting dragged after he posted a now deleted skit showing how men pressure and prey on drunk women. Now, Drewski first shared uh, this on Instagram and captioned the post, quote, that friend that tries to make the girls overly drink. This is the video. Take a look. It's got salad club! Salad club! Never have I ever kissed a dude. That's all I mean. hey, 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 oh, Take a shot. Take a shot. Ah, oh, she bullshit, bro. Bro, that's not so that baby small, shot, bro. bro. He ain't even pouring a no real shot. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep that's going. a regular shot. Yeah. I, got the same, I got the same amount of mine. That's I got the same bad. amount. Nah, you got the whole oh, shit. Y'all already got to catch up with us. Well, listen, after he saw all the negative feedback, the 27-year-old quickly deleted the post, but social media already posted everywhere, including on Hollywood Unlocked. And one user <laughs> pointed out both sides of the argument and said that Drewski's skit usually clowns the people he's acting like, but this one seemed to make light of predatorial behavior and sex assault. Now, this is one of the tweets from a fan. Drewski's comedy is habitually making fun of lame-ass niggas, so I don't think he was condoning it, but I think where he missed the mark was these ain't just lame niggas. These are sexual predators. He should have been more intentional than resorting it to weirdo behavior. The person went on to say this. If Drewski really wanted to be intentional, he could have added a part of the skit where the homies called the creepy nigga out, kicked him out, took the girls to the side, away from him, etc. actually showcase the actions men need to take uh, to call out their friends who are predatory. Now, Drewski hasn't commented on uh, the incident. Uh, Damage, what do you think? Yeah, um, knowing Drewski's skits, and I've been following Drewski for a long time, that's definitely the premise of his, um, his comedic skits. He tried to make fun of the guy in the situations. He made fun of dudes that do perk cassettes, and I feel like I agree with the, lady, the young lady that made that tweet. I think he needed to add... A little bit more to the ending so people who are not really familiar with him or just in general can understand that he is not condoning he's not making fun of the sexual predator act itself but more so the guy and i think he just missed the mark right there at the end this is a very um sensitive subject because all of us watching this knows that person we've all been in situations like that i know people very, very i can think of people right now that has done stuff like that so uh, was the skit realistic? Yes, but at the end of the day, if you're calling out a person for being a weirdo, you need to identify that this person is being a weirdo in this situation. And I feel like he just missed the mark right there. But let me say this, you know, and I, I think what's important um, is that, uh, well, first of all, I don't believe he should be canceled. I, I'm, we're not canceling nobody no, black in 2022. No, 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 no. But I do believe, you know, he's being held accountable. And when you do things that you know, are intended to be funny, but fall flat or fall short of being aware of the times we're in or the fact that, you know, women are being sexually trafficked or taken advantage of. I mean, R. Kelly, one of the best singers in the world, is in jail going to prison because of this very thing. Similar, I mean, you know, similar things. Um, I think it's important to not be tone deaf. And I feel like, again, hashtag protect black women does not apply to anybody other than Megan Thee Stallion. Because I feel like, again, like this is something where I feel like more people should be frustrated about, but then create a conversation that allows us to explore how we can be better at protecting the women that we talk about that we love, right? Um, I also don't mm -hmm. think that all comedy is funny. 
this is clearly one of those things where it's this wasn't funny. Um, and uh, but it, you know, all comedians don't always get everything right. So does he need to be canceled? No, I don't even know who this guy is. He probably won't get on Wild and Out because MTV is not going to support somebody that's been in this kind of controversy. But he'll continue to go on on his Instagram if he has a lot of followers and make money. But I don't know. I think this was tacky. It wasn't well thought out. And, um, you know, he's bearing the brunt of it all. Yeah, I think here's the thing. We have to separate being tone deaf from being malicious. I think what he did was tone deaf, but I don't think it was malicious. Right. If he was trying to clown the dudes, I wish in a perfect world that he had had a woman around or somebody who'd been through this to consult and be like, hey, I'm about to make fun of this thing and I'm intending to make fun of the dude. But how do I make sure I don't step into a, a pile of dog shit? He didn't do that. Hindsight is 2020. This is a perfect example of when to show grace. Earlier, we've been talking about men and women and how we relate to each other. This is a perfect example of someone who was intending to do well. And we could all tell he's intending to do well. If you go down his page, you can tell that, right? And he did it wrong, but he's opening to listening. He's taking it down. This is a perfect example of when accountability makes more sense than canceling. And I just want to make sure that we're not just hitting everybody with the same brush. Sexual assault, rape, harassment, murder. There's different levels to all these serious offenses. And it's not a weirdo behavior. I will say this. Let's stop saying it's weirdo behavior. Being a sexual predator is rape. It's not a weirdo behavior. It's actually being a sexual predator. And I think the biggest blind spot was that he didn't realize that what he was doing wasn't weird. It was assault. And I hope he's learned from that. Yeah, I mean, it was just dumb. And, you know, nobody said he was a scholar. Nobody said these people were scholars, you know. But, but when... You are given a platform. You have to be responsible. There are so many things that I want to say. I'll be honest with you. I used to say everything I thought. I used to say everything I felt. I used to say everything I wanted to get off. But now I realize that sometimes silence is the biggest killer. Like you ain't got to say everything. Or if you do want to say something be th- that you know, you know, can ride that can ride that edge of being to cross it over into a different place, you know, be more mindful of that. And I don't know that 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 thought was happening. And clearly he's not surrounded by people that actually care about his career. And the reason this is even a conversation in the first place, because he is a really big comedian. He has a lot of sponsorships. He works with a lot of brands and he could possibly, uh, I hope not, but be canceled in that way where, you know, making this kind of content that's tone deaf, whether it was malicious or not, looks bad, bro. And I, I really hope that, you know, he does learn from this. I hope that he puts out, um, a really thought out apology because I, I I feel like and I can't speak for him that he didn't mean it for, to go this way but it went that way so I wish him the best and uh, hope you know hope this doesn't impact his career too much. Well, listen, um, you know I I don't think the brand should drop him because like Blue said I don't think it was malicious. You know I think I, I do like that point that if you maliciously like when your intent is to be malicious then you should lose some stuff, right? I don't think you should be canceled, but you should definitely feel the consequences. But I don't think this was that case. Well, another person that had some reckless things to say, uh, he's not friend of the show yet, but I know him, is Mano. He said that he likes to role play <laughs> as a slave with white women. <laughs> now, Mano went on Angela Yee's podcast, um, Lip Service, and he had a lot to say um about what he likes to do in the bedroom and when he's with the the pink women he uh loves to be treated like a slave and this is what he told angela the role play yeah the role yeah, play was the role this feels like it's gonna be so wrong it's so wrong i'm gonna tell you right now oh i've never God. talked about this uh-oh oh, shit. i like to be like a runaway slave okay no Man, oh, oh shit oh my god <laughs> i like to play like a runaway slave okay i like to play like a, diso- a disobedient slave with a white woman so tell me like what you say Yes, man. So, I was sorry. I, I, it's just two. It's, it's it's two of them. Like it's like me getting whooped, right? You get whooped. It's like it's like I play like you whip. Was, but most of them don't want to play like that. This is this. Yeah, I was gonna say, what white woman goes along with this? They don't want to play like that. They don't. Okay. This is my. Fa- it's like, listen, you're gonna act like <laughs> your masters. Your, your master's uh, husband, uh, wife, wife, and I'm the running. And I just got whooped by master for uh, eye- eyeballing okay. me. Oh. But the whole time you've been really. You know, you, you, you like it. You've been anyway. eyeballing me. Oh, uh, this sounds like some freaky porn. I'm interested. Right, this is freaky shit. And yeah. then I'm going to I'm gonna come all sweaty, right? Just finished getting whooped. And you're going to say, no, Billy Joe, no. No, Billy Joe, no. <laughs> Nasa's not going to like it. He's not going to like it. That's what you know you're going to like. This is the whole script. Yeah, it's the whole script. So, so white women have gone along with words. this and done this. He's speaking from experience. Nobody really went along with it. Like, okay. I stood up on the wall and said, come on, let's act it out. And he was like, man, no, are you crazy? What if they call you the N-word? 
See, this is this is because this comes this with it. Where, this is where it goes deep, and this is where I'll probably be canceled after this. <laughs> you be right like, here. don't say it. I know what he said after that, and you know what? We're not canceling Mayno because <laughs> I told y'all I'm not, I can't say the story here, but I have a friend that did some role playing and some racial stuff, and it was inappropriate as hell. And I always joke with him, and I always tell people that he can't be having people, you know, make him put bandanas on his head and get, have sex and look like a gangster <laughs> because that's that that's that thing right white people fetishizing over us want us to be slaves <laughs> want us to be gangsters like i'm not about to come rob you i had sex with somebody one time i am no no i can't even tell you the role play because i'm just too embarrassed they wanted me to do things that are just criminal but but here's the deal mayno said he likes to be treated like a slave by his white women and called Toby or Tobinaki or whatever name he said, is he wrong for that? I mean, it's his bedroom. I, I, I learned from Blue, you can't kink shame. And I didn't know that shame. was a thing until I met Blue. I didn't know you could kink shame. So I can't kink shame him. So I'm just going to let it go right there. I will say, okay, so I, I appreciate the the level of adding, because, you know, I'm a former member of the kink community, so I try to educate when I can. So this what ain't no is not, damn kink. No. no, but it's not, but it's no. not, let me if finish you, it. If, not if that white woman would have tied him up, whipped him and called him Toby, that was straight out of Kunta. That was not kinky. That is just some, I'm about to say the same thing. Out of pocket shit. Okay. So what, what he's doing is not role play. It's race play which is not kink. And this is why Brittany Renner, even though we don't always agree with everything she does, she's a very smart girl. When she said, sometimes your preference is actually unresolved self-hate. And so what he's doing is not role-playing, it's race play, which is concerning. Now, a lot of men, I'm not gonna, oof, I hope nobody I've been with is watching this. A lot of men like it when they can relinquish power and have women dominate them. I have a paddle in my living room. Like, I'm not even going to pretend like this is some new shit. Some men like being spanked. They like a little bit of kink. They like when the woman is in control. There's nothing wrong with but that. They, part. Didn't the ask you thing... to spank them. they didn't ask you to spank them with a noose around their neck. Exactly. The only part of it is, so it's not the spanking and the domination that's the issue. It's the race part. The race part is race play. And that's when it goes from being kink to being unresolved racial trauma. I will also say this, like, Sometimes when you're in a sexual situation with someone, you don't know how to tell them, hey, babe, this one from Kinky to Problematic. I actually was dating somebody one time and all of a sudden I realized that he had like a food fetish and he was trying to feed me in a way that was kind of problematic. I was like, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> so sometimes you have like, mm -mm, you're not going to do that to me. So, Jason, fix your face. I'm sharing. And so you have to be realizing. I was like, oh, oh you have a fat girl you know fetish. What? You know what? You know what? Okay. I'm just going to move on. I'm not even going there. I'm not even going there because I saw somebody just throwing a Subway sandwich at you and it made me really uncomfortable. It okay, was not look, a Subway sandwich, Jason. Look, well, listen, a Starbucks, I don't know. But listen, uh, Jesus. Okay, here's the deal, right, Mayno? I understand, you know, she probably clenched your balls like, and it felt like a noose or somehow she whipped you and that sexual thing did something for you and you thought Harriet Tubman was somewhere behind you saying, run, run. No, but, bro. I kind of feel like that crosses the line. Shout out to Mano, who has a show on Fox Soul, by the way. Go watch his show. I'm sure he'll be talking about it over there. But I'm going to also hold Angela Yee's black ass accountable because that show <laughs> is so fun. And she slides you these little drinks to get you tipsy. Then all of a sudden, your ass is drunk and you done said some crazy shit like wanting to be a slave for some white girl. Uh, this is just... Um, Mano, this is just wild. You're crazy for that. Wow. Mano responded to the backlash. This is what he said. Yeah, I don't know. Y'all can't take a joke. Hmm? You niggas can't take a joke. Hmm? That's what can I said. That's what this, I said. You, you niggas ain't got no, no sense of humor. T I tell them. That's what I told them, too. You, you, you niggas ain't got no You don't like to play around? Mm. Well, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it a fantasy? Was it? Or, it, it, it never it, happened. It was for fantasy mode, like FanDuel, like fantasy football. Like, well, two things, two observations, really quick. One, um, Jim Jones called him Django in the post, which is hilarious <laughs> as hell. Oh my god! And the other thing is, Jim Jones went viral for saying his mom taught him how to kiss, and they in the car together, and both conversations happened on Angela's show. So shout out to Lip Service for getting the internet talking. I can't. You know, I have no fetish. Do I have a fetish? Yeah, you I don't do know that I have. What's the fetish? And please don't say, I already know what you're going to say. What is it? 
No, I'm saying everybody has a fetish. You just, you just haven't discovered oh. it. Everybody has a fetish. Well, I have I have a type. I don't know that I have a fetish. Like like for example, if I was in the bed with somebody and we lay in there, candles burning, you know, fireplaces burning, music is playing, and then he slides down and starts sucking my toes. I'm telling you right now, I I have a fetish with kicking somebody's ass about the house. I don't believe in sucky toes, but you know the crazy part is when I was younger. I felt like it was permissible to put everything in your mouth, you know? But now as I'm older, a little bit classier, you know what I mean? I'm eating better foods, you know, I've lost weight. My fashion game is up. I just have an appearance to uphold. I just don't ever want somebody to look down at me and see their feet in my mouth. Plus a lot of niggas don't take care of their feet. I've been looking at toes and like in between the toes. I just don't understand people that will put their tongue in places that they actually know are walking around in mildewed, 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 mildewed type shoes. Like, or socks. I'm not going to kink shame. I'm going to let you guys have your fetishes as long as it's not yeah. race play. I never got the foot thing, but like I said, I yeah, like I'm scared of feet kink too. shame. You can't do it. One last thing before we get out of here. I want to send a special shout out to Wendy Williams. I finally got on a call with Wendy yesterday and today. She sounded better than ever. And I'm going to be flying to New York to see Wendy, but I wanted to send love to her and a big shout out to her. And she told me how much she loves me and how much she loves Hollywood Unlocked. Um, and uh, it was good to hear her say, how you doing? It, I missed that. I missed that for daytime. The Wendy Williams show is not the same, but shout out to Wendy. And I can't wait to see you. Until then, America, I'm out. All right, look, that was a great show. And make sure you keep coming back because we got all types of amazing interviews and topics that are going to make you go crazy. Uh huh. That's right. That means like, subscribe, do everything you need to do to make sure you stay up to date with what we got going on. And ladies, stay tuned in because you know I have your back. And listen, make sure that you're commenting below because even though I say I don't read it on the show, that's all I do when it's over. Peace.